Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight we have longtime friend, Millie Grineau. It's been a while since you've been it's on. It's been a while. <laughs> it's so great to see you again. I yeah, know, but yeah. she's so busy. I said, you got to come back and tell us what's going on now. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Millie, and it would take me the whole show to do, to tell you everything. The, um, she has about 10 books out. I think, is this the latest? This is the second edition. Well, oh. no, it's not the latest. Because really? the workbook <laughs> is keep after up with her. that. Yeah. And the DVD is oh, after that. Okay, but that's all right. the core one. She's got she's and she's got a fascinating background. I'm going to make you tell it again because it is so fascinating. And she is the creator of um, Oasis in the in the, in the overwhelm. Um, and boy, today do we need that? We've had <laughs> an overwhelming equipment, buses that don't show up. Yes, rain. Yes, it's like yeah. But we're here now, and we're happy about that. <laughs> yes, yes, a little breath, yes. and we will proceed. Millie, tell us, because your background does not say, oh, this will be a coach. <laughs> or maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your background. A which bit I find about the background. Amazing. The uh, shorter version I'll do. <laughs> okay. Uh, fifth of seven kids in family in mm -hmm. Kentucky, working class family. And I'm really eternally grateful to my dad because I, as I get older in life, I realize how much I took from him. Mm. That he just was curious about everything. And whenever we'd go out, he'd embarrass us because he'd talk with everybody. <laughs> and we said, do you know him, Dad? No, but you know. <laughs> so I think that's part of what's kind of led me through life in my various paths. Mm. Went to traditional schools in Kentucky, and then I asked myself, what do I want to do with my whole life? And I was raised very Catholic and very idealistic. And I can remember standing in my backyard and thinking, is it going to be two years for John F. Kennedy, who was then president mm -hmm. in the Peace Corps, or is it going to be my whole life for God and the whole world? So guess which mm, one? I bet God won. <laughs> In fact, I know he did. <laughs> God won, and I went to become a Mary Knoll sister, which was the greatest group that I could have joined because their whole intention is to go to other cultures and learn wow. with them and from them, not to make them like us, but to mm. learn. And that, in its own way, brought me to Bolivia and Peru, where I learned so much from the people. Then I learned that I wasn't meant to be a nun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant learning process, yes. <laughs> and I tease and say that in a way the people there converted me out of the organizational <laughs> church. It was like I didn't want to be bound in and I didn't represent things that they were saying and didn't want to represent that. Mm. So then I just left not having an idea what I would do, where I'd live. Knew that I wanted to keep Spanish keeping going, speaking. Mm -hmm. So found out that in New Haven, Connecticut, where I just went to visit a friend, 15% of the population was Spanish speaking. So that's I did what, not know that. Yeah, really? Wow. Yeah, right <laughs> on the coast. A lot of people from Puerto Rico, Central America, and now Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I could try for a job here, but I didn't want to tell anybody I had been a nun. So I kind of let <laughs> them think I had been in Peace Corps. I got a job teaching <laughs> ESL. Not which only did she quit God, but she lied on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't lie. They, if they had asked me, I would have, okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So I loved teaching ESL to adults. And then I lived three years in Spain studying guitar. <laughs> then I came back, and those were my wild and crazy years. Mm -hmm. uh, then went to study social work because I knew I loved working with people. And then sometime, geez, it's 18 years ago, one of my friends called and said, Millie, I'm studying coaching. Can you do a guinea pig session with me? <laughs> so she was calling from Pennsylvania. I had known her through Rubenfeld Synergy, which is a body-mind method that I studied, and mm -hmm. I was her teacher. So she called me back. I had one coach session. I thought, ooh, I Hooked. like <laughs> this. I like this. Mm -hmm. So the very next year, I enrolled in Coaches Training Institute in 99, and ever since then, oh, wow. have been coaching. No, in between, weren't you certified by a couple of very impressive, I'm going to say swamis and meditation people? Yeah, and, well, yeah. I, I studied, I had the good 
fortune to study with Thich Nhat Hanh. I know. I saw that on your resume, I and I went, oh, my God. Bicycle accident. Someone just bought me a magazine. I bought me a oh, beautiful book by him. I went, oh, so my gosh. wonderful. Yeah. It was like in, I had this bad accident, which you know about. But right. the summer after that, a friend invited me to go to Omega Institute. Mm. And this was 1988, before people knew about him, you know? Yeah. And we had a week with him, which oh. continues to influence me. It's Still, like part yeah. of the core teaching in my oasis wow. is the simplicity and the strength of Thich Nhat Hanh. Fantastic. And then in the mid-90s, sometime with John Kabat-Zinn in mindfulness-based mm -hmm. stress reduction, mm -hmm. and Alana Rubenfeld, who was really... You're one, one of the ten, aren't you? That in Alana Rubenfeld's, yeah. yeah. In so. the world. <laughs> in the whole world. In the whole world. <laughs> Amazing, um, and I, and she was also. I mean, not that she was. This was impressive. But then, when you became a coach, they named you Coach of the Year in coach Connecticut. Coach of the Year in yeah. Connecticut, yeah, <laughs> which surprised me. It was like, huh? And I was like, whoa. I see, yeah, with that background, I know. <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. All right, so you're coaching and you're bopping along and you're having a good time. How did Oasis and the Overwhelm come about? That came about strictly not by design. I had just married for the first time and inherited these teenage stepsons. <laughs> and I thought I was adjusting. I was writing some more books, uh, beginning my own practice. This was before the coaching had begun. Oh, okay. And I thought I had it all, you know, balanced. I'm sure. doing fine. <laughs> and my friend asked me to go for a bike ride one summer day in July. And I thought, yeah, I only have five things to do today, so forget it. <laughs> Went for him on the bike ride. Still don't know what happened. I think he thinks I was hit a pothole and thrown over the handlebars. Mm. Knocked unconscious. It was before cell phones. He didn't know what to do. Stay with me, look, oh my gosh, whatever. Yeah. So he tells me later, somehow a car came, took me to the green at Deep River, and a Life Star helicopter flew me the 42 miles to Yale New Haven ER. Mm. And I was unconscious that whole time, except I remember coming to once and hearing the whir of the helicopter in the hands of the EMT woman. And mm. I thought, she is good, this <laughs> life star woman. And uh, so that whole recoup, being in the hospital, in the ER, in rehab, I had three concussions, ruptured kidney, oh. kind of woke me up. I had worked in the mental health division of that hospital and realized that the people who treated me more as a human being were not the professionals. It was the orderly who called me by wow. name, yeah. the housekeeper who came, okay if I touch there? She, yeah, yeah. She came, how you doing, honey? They hadn't even washed the blood off, but she, she just came out <laughs> and said, how you doing, honey? So that was like the beginning of my wake up call about, okay, I'm doing all of this, so who am I really, mm. and wow. what am I here on this earth for? Did you have the feeling that, okay, this was a close call, but obviously I'm not finished yet, so oh, yeah. 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 yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, I must be here for a reason, yeah. let's figure and that out, and that's the hardest thing, why am I here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, uh, I didn't have one of those, like, seeing the light and going to the next world, it was <laughs> oh, just like... Oh, good. <laughs> I was just like, oh. <laughs> you just weren't there. <laughs> beat up, <laughs> gone. And it was in my hammock that I slowed down enough to ask those questions, which were usually mm -hmm. too busy to ask. Were, were you forced into um, yeah. inertia? Yeah, yeah I, yeah. I couldn't work for three months at all, and then the next three months it was part time. So it was a blessing in disguise. It was. Isn't that Are amazing? you my mother? That's what my mother would have said. <laughs> in retrospect, I got it. But it, boy, when it's happening, I don't know yeah. what's going on, but it's amazing. Yeah. 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 So it was in that time when I realized, unless I did something different, I'd just get caught in the rat race again. So I kind of let all the wisdom that had been given to me kind of percolate and mm. digest. And that's when I came up with four 60-second strategies that you could do anytime, anywhere, that would bring you to just calm and a little more clarity and focus.
So that's the heart of Oasis, really. Really? Yeah. Four strategies. Four yeah. strategies. That anybody can do. Anybody. And my friend Joe, uh, who was on the bike ride. you got to get this book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he said, Mill, you only got four. There are books that have 60. And I said, yes, Joe. That's I had the right I four. Yes. Only <laughs> four. So you'll do them. Can you tell us one of them? I don't want you to give the whole book away. But okay. Just. Let me see what would be the most fun. I know what. I love the 4D. It's a 4, 3, 2, and 1 of the strategies. The 4D stands for four directions. Oh, okay. And uh, we'll do two versions. Lily's going to make me do something dumb. I know yeah, she's I every time. Something <laughs> yeah. So you can sit here and all you do is go north. Okay. Do it with me. Oh, north. North. Okay. South. South. East. Wait, uh, east, okay. Wherever it is. <laughs> west. Oh, no, I'm bad at that west. And then just, you could say like Canada. Patagonia, Paris, simply doing that gets your body moving in your mind. In alignment with your brain, I guess. Yeah. Ah. In a, but here's the kicker. When you've had a day like we've had, <laughs> I actually <laughs> learned this. We when need to I go around the world a couple times, yes. <laughs> One of my, it was a group that I had at the Hispanic oh. Clinic who were really group of depressed people, and they couldn't do this. Uh, it was just like too much. Really? Oh. So, uh, so I thought, okay, I've got to find a way to do the 4D with them that works. And I thought, we could do a 4D dump. Dump things that are cluttering oh. our mind. Okay, 4D dump. All so, right. like <laughs> us for this morning, it would be that lousy bus. bus. Oh, and, <laughs> and for you, uh, no mouse. No mouse. <laughs> Whatever that <And> means. <laughs> connections are bad. And yeah, will I get there on exactly. time? Exactly. So that's craziness. the 4D yeah. dump. And then oh, okay. when, when you're you over, when overwhelmed. overwhelmed. When you're overwhelmed just with, with just sh sh things sh that are going crazy. I, yeah. I do it four times a day. Like after a lousy phone call mm -hmm. or before mm -hmm. something, you know. And once you've dumped it, then you have room to invite in. So what would you like mm -hmm. to invite in? Yeah. Ah, yeah. so you don't just, it's not an empty vessel, you bring it all back. Well, we can't be an empty vessel, even if we try, but, right. <laughs> so you just bring it on so back. I'll yeah. bring in something, and you can say, I'm bringing in my delight in being with you here, Larry. Okay, and I'm bringing in the fact that Millie didn't come all the way from Connecticut and not make a show. We're making a show, <laughs> so I'm thrilled that it all worked and out. And the delight that we can both talk Ex yes. and walk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So but that's an <laughs> example. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love that. I, I just had, um, and I will credit, and I think I even know her name, Lynn Robinson, who's an intuitive um, coach maybe or something, asked, uh, said something about, um, are you ready to surrender everything? Mm. And she said, make a surrender box, oh. and which is a great idea too. It's like, and you just get a yeah. box and write on a piece of paper whatever you're worried about. Throw it in the box, and when you start to worry about it, it's like, oh, wait, I forgot, I surrendered that, you know? I love that. It's so that's cool. the same thing. It's, it's cool. like, oh, wait, it's I already like, dumped that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't. Why carry it all yeah. the time? Oh, I love that. That's yeah. such a great idea. Yeah. So that's one of the strategies, and there's them. more, but you can, you can dump, you can start dumping right now if you like. <laughs> and, and so from that came, now, now I know you have, and, and when you're, um, I guess your brand is, you have a stone. Yeah. And, and, and where, where does the stone come in? Well, the stone I learned from Thich Nhat Hanh. Oh, that okay. That was the simple thing. He said when he was in Vietnam, he really wanted to go help the orphans and the wounded, hmm. but he wasn't used to being in the streets. He was used to being in the monastery. Ah. So when he went out, he lost it. So he taught this one stone meditation to the kids at the retreat knowing that if the kids got it, we adults might get it. And I can remember him telling me. I love you know, that he started with the kids. That's yeah, so cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing to me. I just, one of the people who's my trainers is now teaching a whole group, and she's working with people who are working with kids. And she said this five-year-old who's been thrown out of three daycares already because oh. nobody can stand her, they did the one stone with her, and she's just like, <sighs> she can she can do and it and calm, yeah. you know? So it's really simple things, but also what's really given me more confidence in doing these is the latest in neuroscience is really backing up 
the veracity of these strategies. Yeah. That we really can change our brain. To and our react. brain waves and, and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah Didn't yeah. you also have a, um, a CEO client that you thought you were getting nowhere with and then you, you ran him to him and he had his, the stone <laughs> exactly. in his pocket? And it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because he <laughs> came to me. He didn't. I met him at a Chamber of Commerce meeting and mm -hmm. his wife introduced me. He said, are you a member of the ma Chamber of Millions? He said, yeah, <laughs> good, good. What are you doing? I said, well, I'm a coach. I teach. What do you, stress me? Oh, I don't have time to stretch <laughs> my, I'm a type have time for double stress. A. <laughs> so his his wife said he had had two heart attacks oh. and in his 40s, and she knew mm. he needed to do something. So he he's in the book. I call him Nick in the book. Oh, but okay. he tells okay. me, I can tell his real name. Oh. I said, Tony, <laughs> I don't want you to lose your fire. I want you to use your fire in a way that will last. So, okay, Miller, okay. <laughs> Didn't come, but about a month later, I think his wife was behind him. He called mm -hmm. me and said, I got an hour. Can I come into your office and you teach me? So he came in, fast learner. He got him yeah, like yeah. that. And I didn't know if it made any difference. And that's when you remember I saw him downtown maybe a month later. Millie, how's it going? <laughs> Shakes my hand. He had the stone in his, in his hand. hand. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, yeah that's so and funny. Say, reminds me to chill with Mill. <laughs> chill with Mill. I like so. that. <laughs> that's that's yeah. amazing. So it's not only for children, and it's not only for CEOs. Everybody in between yeah. can just calm the heck down. Yes, yeah. <laughs> just calm it down. So what are you doing with, because last time I talked, you were doing the book, and it was really, now it's like you're a conglomerate almost, yeah, right? What are you really doing? It's really exciting because it's going like to the next level. Yeah. The people that I've trained to become authorized OASIS trainers, there are now 130 of them throughout the wow. states in wow. New Zealand, Panama, somewhere else, Europe, Puerto Rico. And of these, there are now 20 people who are certified master OASIS trainers so that so they, they can, can do, do the, the training oh and give gosh. CEs, et cetera, through the yeah. OASIS organization. So it's like, Spreading it out. Legacy Spreading is going out. around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when, when, what what could the average person who maybe doesn't want to be a trainer until they see what the heck we're talking about? Yeah. What could what what workshops do you have available for them? I think the best way to see what's current is to go to my website. Okay, and which is right at the bottom, Millie Grino. Changed, you know. Mm -hmm. We let you know what's coming up month by month. Do you month. mostly have one day, or is it five day intensive? Well, it, it or? really depends. Sometimes we do a one hour workshop, a three hour workshop. Oh, if somebody okay. wants to bring us in for a lunch and learn. You know, it's really okay. adaptable. The training to become a trainer is really, we've choreographed it so you really get it in depth, but you get the brain science, you get the strategies, wow. you get how to do it. And that's a two-day training with work in between. And that, if you're an ICF coach, you get 14 CEs for it. Wow. It's really okay. in that's, social That's workers, very impressive. And yeah. drug people can get it also. It, it's really... Very practical, but academic and practical mm -hmm. at the same time. And then when you finish that, you could you could do your own you workshop. Can, you can oh. do your own workshops. You couldn't do a training unless you became the certified master OASIS trainer, but right, you can do right. your own workshops and teach it to whomever you want to. Wow. Which we encourage people to do. They say, well, I'm not Millie. And I said, no, you're, <laughs> you're <Rory>. you. <laughs> do it how you do it. Bring and to the table what the, you have. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So we have yoga people. We have a, an IT person whose main goal, he said, I want to go on the Metro North train and teach people how to do it. You know, so <laughs> the Metro North train, all right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever your niche is. Yeah. 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 Wow, we could we could have um, we could have used that because we had everybody running around today, but they were yeah. everybody was calm and we yeah. were calm. I, I think, and I think as long as we weren't pounding the fi our fist and stomping our feet and doing size, it really yeah, it well, you it just, know from yeah. intuition and from reality yeah. that how we are affects our atmosphere. Definitely, yeah. and, and I'm I'm a true believer that what you give out, you get back. So yes. you know that yes. you have to. Um, 
And if someone's trying to give it to you, it's like, no, turn it around, dump it. <laughs> dump that, yes, yeah. yeah, whichever direction you'd like it yeah. in. So, so what do you want people to know about um, the overwhelm, I guess, and, and where yeah. they, is the, I mean, it's not, I don't want to give people the, uh, a, a concept that, you know, it's a, a detailed thing and you have to follow these steps. Everybody has their own oasis, Absolute. right? And yeah. it's cool that you, I mean, you can guide them, but it's cool that they can create their own, oh, whatever's going to work for them. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And yeah. we all, the overwhelm hits different people in different ways. Yeah. And, and yeah. currently, our, uh, I think our culture is in a state of overwhelm. Oh, definitely. And the media feeds it so that, mm. uh, you know, PTSD, I think our country, our nation, our world is in a state of high alert. Yes, from yes. trauma and fear and all constant of change and, yeah. and and things that don't fit into the slot so we thought they were right, fitting into and right. it's just a little chaotic yeah, yeah. so yeah. And it, as I age and go on like I'm losing friends who are younger than I true true so, yeah. and illness and people losing their jobs and taking care of older parents. There's all kinds of yeah. challenges and overwhelm. So a lot of what this is about is, oh, I forgot to tell you one of the key things about Thich Nhat Hanh, oh, okay. that one stone. He said, it, this is not about closing your eyes and going away to a peaceful place. He said, no, this is about having your eyes open seeing what's here uh -huh. now and developing the emotional muscles to be right here, right now, with whatever's going on. Wow. He said it sounds yeah. easy, but it's like training for the Olympics. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, I, yeah. I I have never mastered meditation, and I, and I think it's because I set this high standard and say, yeah. um, you know, I, my mind has to be clear, and it never is. It's like zipping around like crazy. So it's like, well, That's I could do. I may as well get up and do stuff yeah. and, and be productive. But yeah. so I, I've I've never really mastered it, but I've mastered some other things. We'll talk. Okay. And, and okay. My invitation is: don't think about mastering meditation. Just be. Just do just it. Just be yeah. here. And he <laughs> says it's like training a dog, you know, when things, you can't black out because our minds, that's what they do. It just do. won't happen. It just, just yeah. Just let yeah. it, see it go by and come back to your breath in the stone. Eyes open. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think the visual part of the stone is? Just a reminder. It's is that a it? reminder and it's so tangible. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's been around longer than we have, you know. And right. Most and of it these has veins stones, and all it kinds has, of yeah. mix. It's it's, not it has its own character. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's. I mean, I tell people. I remember a woman was interviewing me, and she was on the phone. She said, "I don't have a stone. Can I use my <laughs> lipstick tube?" I said, "Sure. <laughs> use whatever is here and just." Focus. Yeah, 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 and and it can bring you back if your yeah. mind starts diverting, which mine always does, yeah. and I'm sure everybody does. So it I'm not going to, yeah. you know, take special stuff on that. So w if you had to, if you had to tell people, um, well, what do you want to do with this? I mean, what else could you do with this? <laughs> well, you know, one interesting that's just happened for me is mm. that I've been invited to go to Argentina. Oh my goodness! And, well, <laughs> I, I have yeah. to call her every day to know what she's doing. Yes. <laughs> well, it was partly because I had lived in Latin America, mm -hmm. but one of the people from Argentina heard me in a workshop up here, and he said, "We need you to come down here to teach us both Oasis, and he's got a lot of coaches." that want uh, to know these strategies. So it's going to be, I said, help me with my Spanish, because it's good, but it's not, per he said, we'll be your wings. <laughs> we will help you. I love that. So that's going to happen in this fall. That's going so you're to happen. going? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And another exciting thing is a Muslim African-American woman who's a graduate of the training and is a colleague, she and I are combining to do a whole series that's going to be online called Reclaim My Joy, ah. which is based on the Oasis Rewire Your Brain 28-Day Guide. So that should be coming soon. We're wow. working on it now. So that will be 28 webinars? It's or? going to be four 
webinars, four one-hour webinars, because each, each of the 28 days is four weeks, one week, one strategy. Ah, Next week, another okay, strategy. So okay. you really get to master. So them. you get to, yeah, yeah. So wow, yeah. So we're all going. We're going to find that at the website on the bottom, right? Do you, yeah. When it's yeah. there. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, amazing. That's so exciting. And do you think you'll ever retire? <laughs> My husband, kids, and grandkids ask me that. I'm sure and, they do. <laughs> and I say I'm in the next phase. It's like I'm. I've worked more this year than ever before, but it's like handing it over to these yeah, new people yeah. so that I can do more of what I love presenting, love going around. And I told you what my grandkids gave me for my birthday. Uh, which didn't make any sense until, the, yes, they go ahead, share with us what they gave. I got an electric bass. <laughs> and, uh, music <laughs> is so much a part of me and I haven't yeah. been doing it lately. So it's like I'm noticing I'm taking more time to just be with the bass. Mm. That's kind of like so we talk about finding our passions and honoring who we are. Definitely. And it's like I remember throughout my life how much music has meant to me in doing it with people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where this base is going to lead me, but I'm, I know that in Argentina I'll be doing music with people there. You think? Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. I may not bring the base with me, but singing. Yeah. yeah. And listening, just singing sure. along. Yeah. Fascinating, just just fascinating. And you keep thinking, okay, well, she's got it mastered. We have four techniques. And then she keeps building on it, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which yeah. is so, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I love it because you're sharing it with so many yeah. people. Well, it gets bigger and bigger, and it's still the same simple basic. Exactly. It doesn't get more complicated. It just gets, I guess we're spreading it out. You're it spreading it out, out. to, yeah, yeah to yeah. people yeah. and um, letting more people know about you and can it, find this oasis. And it does feel like it's my little contribution to peace in the world. You know, and, and it's, it's really funny because with the current client, the climate, they're saying, you know, do what you can, yeah. but also take a break because it, yeah. we are, it's, con it's bombarding it's so now. It's too much. So when you so feel like it's over and you want to just go, oh, this is impossible, it'll never get better. Take the break, dump a few things if you gotta, go a direction here, and uh, do what I you gotta do. I thought of one more thing to tell you. Quick, it's, quick, we got 20 seconds. Two months from now, <laughs> at ICF Connecticut, I and Oasis are the guests, oh. and the theme is, how can 60 seconds make you a better coach? Oh my gosh, I wanna come. Maybe come, I'll come to come. Connecticut, who knows? <laughs> but it's, how can it make you a better person? Uh, seriously, seconds. it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you are out there telling people, thank you so much, Millie, thank for you, being Laurie. on this show. This it's, was so much fun. As always, we'll try to keep up with you. Wonderful. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>